conditional commands let us make a decision about which option to choose. Depending on this choice, different things will happen. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the syntax of the conditional command and a different version of conditional command that is called nested if conditions. Then I'm going to address Boolean operations that are needed to make nested conditions more complex as well as comparison operators to build complex conditional softwares. Conditional commands are also called branching. So depending on the complexity of your software, you can have different branched conditions. As we can see in the next coming examples, we'll have different branch conditions. An example is that if you would like to write a computer software that lets you control humidity levels in a mushroom cultivation laboratory. An example software to write this piece of code would be like, if low humidity is true, print increase humidity levels, else print humidity level is fine. The general syntax of conditional command is like the following. You write down if condition, then the statement. For this piece of code, you would need to have the word if, followed by your condition and colon. The next coming statements should be indented by four spaces. Then you write down your statements. This is an example of a software that can control thermostat at home. So if temperature is low, you print turn on the heater. Else, print room temperature is fine. The second type of conditional commands is nested if conditions. In this instance, we have an outer condition and an inner condition. If the outer condition is met, then the inner condition is executed. In this example, we have a software that checks two conditions. The first one, if the temperature is low, and the second one, if the heater is currently on. So we have a variable here, which is low temperature. If the low temperature is true, as it's shown here, so in this condition, the software prints temperature is low. Then it checks the second condition. If the heater is on, the software prints the heater is currently on. Else, it prints turn on the heater. If the temperature is not low, the software prints the temperature is fine. So in this case, particularly, the software does not execute the second condition. Oftentimes, you need to compare between two values. So you can use these comparison operators in order to make comparisons. It is very important to notice that two equal sign is used to make a comparison between two values or two variables. So two equal signs is a comparison operator. However, one equal sign is an assignment operator. Similarly, if you would like to state that this variable or the content of the first variable is not equal to the content of the second variable, you write down the first variable, exclamation mark, followed by equal sign, and then the second variable. In addition, if you want to make your computer software more dynamic, you would need to ask user input. In this case, you use a function that is called input. You need to bear that in mind. The input function gives you the data in string format. So the data from input function is a string and you need to convert it to integer or float. If your requested data should be integer or float, you need to convert the data using integer and float functions. This is an example of asking user input. For example, we have a variable h and we convert it to integer. So we write down h equals to int input, please enter your h. We need to have a space for the user. So you write down colon space, then close parentheses. When you run this code, the user can write an input value. We can use all of these information in this example, that you are asked to write a software for a restaurant that makes decision about payments based on age-related criteria. The criteria is as follows. If the customer is under 12 years of age, he or she wouldn't have to pay. However, if the customer is between 12 to 16 years of age, 
he or she would get 20% discount. Finally, if the customer is older than 16 years of age, there's no discount. As you know, this is a multiple condition example. We have multiple conditions here. The first command starts with if. The second command should start with elif, which is a command stating that if the above is not true, run this code. You can use the else at the end of your condition list. However, it's fine if you stick to elif commands. There are boolean operations like and, or, and not, which could be used in these conditions. So you can use the and operator when two statements have to be true for an operation to take place. The or operator can be used if either or both are true. I mean, if either conditions or both conditions are true. If you want to switch between true and false statements, you can use the NOT operator. The syntax of this software is as follows. You need to have a variable that contains the actual amount of money to be paid, which is $20 here. So you write down payment variable is equal to 20. Then you ask the user input for their age and convert it to float. You write down the first condition. If age is smaller than or equal to 12, the customer does not have to pay. So you write down print, you don't have to pay. Then it comes the next condition. If the customer's age is greater than 12 and smaller than or equal to 16, print your payment is a float value, which is 20% discount. This line of code here ensures conversion of the payment into 20% discount, which is payment, the total of $20 minus the payment multiplied by 0.2. The last condition is that if the age is greater than 16, the payment is $20. So let's execute this block of code. You go to run and run module or press F5 on your keyboard and test three values. Let's test 11. So 11 is free. 14 gets 20% discount and 17 we didn't get any discount. So that's how you write a software that contains multiple conditions and execute it.